We thank you for your anointing and for your presence in this place. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to use the Message Bible. And verse 13 through verse 15. You are the world seasoning to make it tolerable. If you lose your flavor, what will happen to the world? And you yourselves will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the world's light, a city on a hill glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light. Let it shine. For all, let your good deeds glow for all to see so that they will praise your heavenly Father. I want to use verse 14. He says, you are the world's light a city on the hill glowing in the night for the next few moments this is the third iteration glowing in the night you may take your seats if no greater truth could be told the truth of our world today is that our world is shrouded in darkness. It is a darkness that has become more and more pervasive. As such, people are meandering around, feeling in the dark their way from point to point. Right now, we live in that time that the Apostle Paul warned Timothy about. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, he says, the Spirit, God, speaks this way, that in the latter times, some will even depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Everywhere you look, you see people who have no conscience, who with impunity will say anything, you can fact check them later, present facts to people that heard them, and all will believe the lie. People who have no conscience, who will speak wholly on one hand, and will be at the pit of Hades on the other. Totally losing the light that God would want for us to live with and to bring to others. I, I, I have come to remind you of the light. And so anointedly and ably the choir and praise and worship team has brought us to this point. Because the metaphor of light speaks to three things. And these are not the points of the sermon. They're reminders that the metaphor of light speaks to the Lord's sacrifice, to scripture, and to spirituality. It is the light of his will, the light of his word, and the light of his way. Again, let me say it, hold it for a moment that you may get this. It is the light of his will. What is the will of God for your life? How should you be living your life? And what sacrifice are you willing to make on behalf of the sponsor of your life? How is the word, scripture, helping to enhance the luminosity of your life? Or are you running on low lumens, giving barely enough light for a flicker? And is the light your way? Is it that which guides your path? Are you on the spiritual journey? Not the physical journey. Are you consciously on a spiritual journey? And if you were, would you recognize it? What would it mean to you if you were really thinking and living a spiritual journey? How would spirit be guiding? Jesus says, that you and I, if we come into this light, we will never have spiritual darkness. So that those who perceive the true light will never walk in spiritual darkness. I don't know about you, but I've gone in places that were dark, that were unfamiliar to me. And they're the kind of places where you can easily stub your toe and break it. You have to know that you have to be careful. What one has to realize 
And this is important here. Your light is your life. As simplistically as that may sound, your light is your life. I'm going to ask a question that undergirds the thought of my sermon today, and I'm just simply going to ask you, are you embodying the light of life in your daily existence? Are you the embodiment of light? Uh, in case uh, some of you are struggling with this concept, the last time you gave someone the angry bird riding down the street was not a good example of embodying the light. Those of you that didn't get it, you probably have. The last time you used the verbiage of a drunken sailor was probably not the embodiment of the light. The last time you turned it up so well that you did not know when your light turned off you didn't go to sleep you passed out that was not a good embodiment of the light and if you were dropping it like it's hot in the wrong public place Might not have been a good embodiment of the. Do, do you see where I am? The, the reality is that Jesus says that He is the light, and then He deemed us to be light in the world, and the light was the light of all people. It is the light of all people, for everyone, to everyone. That's what John 1, 4 says. And, and, and you and I have to realize, let, let, me, let me see if I can make this even more clear, that if you are the light, and you are to embody the light. Every little thing that we do, everything you do, everything you say has meaning. But more than what you do and say, the spirit that you do and say it in has even greater meaning. Let, let, me, let me put it this way. Your spirit matters more than your words or actions. Someone will say to me, Reverend, how can that be? I, I don't know. Um, I, I'll give you this and, and see if this might resonate with you. You can tell me I love you while giving me the stank eye. And your spirit is not letting me feel any love. You can give me a plate of food and your spirit be bad and I'll be afraid to eat it for fear that you might have made me one of those pies. Yeah. 
your spirit. Because how you project the inner you is a projection of the light of you or the darkness. Uh, you know, it, it, people who say, you can say anything to me if you say it the right way. What they really meant was, you can say anything to me in the right spirit. Correct me with the wrong spirit, and I'm wounded. Correct me with the right spirit, and I'm helped. reality of life is that you and I whether you admit it to yourself or not you are always seeking impressions of the other you are trying to see and you are trying to find out how do they feel about me and what kind of relationship is this? Because your spirit is always sending out the beacon to find if it has found a connection to another who carries the same spirit. Try as you might, to hide your spirit, to hide your intent, to hide your wickedness, to hide your darkness, most of us are sharp enough to recognize the interconnectedness of all living things. That you couldn't really hide your spirit from another if you wanted to. Ever notice that babies and animals pick up on good and bad? Uh, see, you, you, this will go over somebody's head. You, you, someone can walk in the room and have a bad spirit, and the dog all of a sudden, rrr, rrr. that dog never growls. That dog lost his teeth, but now this. This demon walked in and all of a sudden the dog said, no, this is danger. There's a, a breeder who breeds bull mastiffs. And one of the tests of a bull mastiff, if he's really going to be a guard dog, is in the presence of danger. The dog will walk by the side of the master every day, all day. But in the presence of the danger, the dog will walk in front of the master and sit down. There's something out of order. I'm not going to bite unless you tell me to get him. But I'm going to tell you now, something wrong here. And, and can I tell you, this is going to bless somebody right now. Do you know how many bad situations you could have gotten out of had you listened to your spirit? You knew you were going to take the L from day one, but you just said, I can change you. You can fix a lot of things. But unless somebody wants a spirit transfer, unless somebody's willing to put off the old man and put on the new, they cannot renew their spirit by themselves. Therefore, they can only have false light, but never the true light. You know, I, one last example, then I'll, I'll press my claim a little further. Have you ever, I'm, I'm sure you had a parent like mine. 
Um, my mother used to use phrases that I didn't understand. She would say, don't take that tone with me. And, and in my mind, when I was younger, I would say, well, I said that same thing the same way. What tone? Are y'all listening to me? The reality is, it was not in the intonation of my voice. It was not in the articulation of my word. It was what was projected from my spirit at the time it was being said. Phrasing didn't need to change. The spirit of hostility, the spirit of contempt, the spirit of hatred, all needed to be bound. You and I must learn that if we are to glow against the darkness and in the darkness, that you and I have to make sure that our spirits are right so that we can be light in darkness. Okay, three points and I'm gonna be done. Three points. Point number one to, to hold on to. Number one, glow with the spirit of light and life. Glow with the spirit of light and life. Now I put life with light because I want you to make sure you know that I am, when I speak of light, I'm not speaking of something you can't deal with or work with. Because a part of your light is on you. I heard a story the other day, and I, I tried to check the source of it, but I know the story is, is real. Uh, but the story was that a, a couple were in a uh, rural neighborhood, and they would wash their clothes and place them on the line. And one neighborhood lady would look out, and she looked to see her neighbor's clothes, and she said, hmm. Those clothes are mighty dingy to be hanging up on the line in front of folk. Next time the lady did her laundry, she looked out and said, mm, they didn't get no better. I don't even know why she keeping those clothes. They dingy to be hanging out. Next time she put them up, she said the same thing to her husband. He looked at her and he didn't say anything. The next time the lady did her laundry, the lady looked out and said, ooh, my, she must have got a new washing machine. Those clothes look beautiful. Her husband looked at her and said, no, she didn't get a new washing machine. I washed the windows last night. when we are trying to look at the behavior in the way of others when the problem may not be them it may be you okay. A, B, and C and I, I don't have time to break these down so hold on to these three A under here is belief if you're gonna glow with the spirit, you, your belief has to be up. That is your belief in God, your belief in the Son of God, your belief in the mystery of the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the salvific work that God has done. Your belief. B has to be your benevolence. Your benevolence. That is what you do for others without looking for return. If all of your giving must be reciprocal, it is not benevolence. Okay, and 
and see, and I'll come back to this over and over again, your behavior. Because people don't care what you say if they see what you do doesn't line up with what you say. You know, um, you, you can't tell me you love me, you beating on me. You, 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 you can't tell me you love me and you're always yelling in my direction. Your behavior matters. You can say, I love you, 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 but you gotta show some sign. Glow with the spirit of light and life in your belief, your benevolence, and your behavior. All right, number two. Number two. You have to guard within the spirit of light and life. You have to guard within the spirit of light and life. Uh, um, this, 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 this is important. You have been given the ability to live a light-filled life. No one has to give it to you now. When you renew your mind in Christ, you already innately have the ability to live this life. In many cases, you were already close to the kingdom because you were raised with good values. Come on. See, this is going to bless your socks off. The biggest problem that most of us have is that we will not allow our conscience to work to our benefit. It is something we deny. Okay. So here's the A. In order to guard your light and life in God, You've got to use your conscience. That is your natural endowment, and I parenthesis say your earth light. You've got to use your conscience. There are times when you have known right from wrong and have chosen wrong with intentionality. Okay, see some of y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You know you weren't supposed to go. You know you weren't supposed to do. And you know if you got caught, it would be a mess. Is there anybody beside me that's ever made that mistake? Um, I made that choice. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't, maybe I don't. No, you, what? You willfully did it. And the biggest thing each of us has to do is to get back to allowing the God consciousness in us to work on our behalf. Lest we fool around and get to the place where it no longer works. That's the place where we are now that the apostle was speaking of. Where the conscience is seared with a hot iron so everything goes and I feel no guilt or remorse about anything because it was what I wanted and my pleasure is more important than the path that I'm trying to be on. And what you must learn is that the path takes precedent over the pleasure because if you follow the path you get to the greatest pleasure that is a life of love and trust in the divine it is allowing my natural endowment my conscience to work for me 
And many times, I, I, don't, I can't speak for anybody sitting here, but I do know this much, if you deny this, you're probably not being honest. Most of us have gone against our own better judgment on more than one occasion. And in truth, when it was over, you said to yourself, I knew better. Can, can I bless you real good now? See, some of you think I'm just talking about sin. And as Carl Minniger, the Kansas psychiatrist, would say that whatever happened to sin, because now nothing is sin, you just do it. But, but, but I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about the God conscience in you that tried to prevent you from making mistakes that were lawful, but in the words of the apostle, not expedient. And you knew it was okay, but it wasn't wise. And your conscience was speaking to you to use wisdom and not base it on pleasure or vanity. And instead, you followed the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And you played silly games. And you were surprised when you got silly prizes. Whew. Okay, come on. I, I'm rolling. I got, I got it. Let me get you to be here. I'm, I'm almost done today. I'm almost done. Whew. The be here is that in order to guard your spirit within, you also have to use the charisma that is your supernatural endowment. And I put in parentheses, your enhanced light. God will give you the gift of discernment, the gift of discernment of spirits, the gift of wisdom, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally. God wants to give you your enhanced light. I don't know. Some of you might have flashlights like I have at home. I have mine set on the lower setting because I only need a little bit of light when I'm trying to see certain things. But there's a mode on there that'll come so bright that'll just illuminate the entire room. That's an enhanced mode. Guess what? You can't stay in enhanced mode long because it's using so much energy that even the flashlight itself will get hot. So I'm not saying that on every occasion you're going to be praying and asking God whether I turn right or turn left at the next corner. I'm suggesting to you that you miss the mark when you don't pray about life decisions and making choices that are going to affect the greater part of your existence. You miss using the enhanced light that will let you see more than you can see in your normal flesh. You got to guard it. I, I want to give you a scripture to help with this. I want to invite you all to read Ephesians 4, 1 through 32. And, and sometime, I'm not going to read it all now, of course, but sometime, put some time in it, read it. It'll bless your socks. But I'm going to jump down to verse 17. And I'm going to read a few verses. And I want you to get this. Verse 17 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk 
in the vanity of their mind. Hold, pause, wait a minute, catch hold of this. He says, don't walk in the vanity of your mind. I know you're brilliant. I know you smart. You smart. You what? Kind and use important. I know it. But be careful walking in the vanity of your own mind. He says, what happens? Having the understanding darkened. He says, sometimes people will be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to the work of all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. In other words, put off the old self. However you identify, put off the old self. Put off the deceit, put off the lying, put off the lust. He says, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new person, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, let me wrap this up. Here, here it is. Final word, final word. Number three, and I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this one. So then I want you to do this. That if you are going to do as I have asked, that you're going to glow with the Spirit, that you're going to guard the Spirit, then finally I ask you to be guided within by the Spirit of light and life. I want you to be guided in it. Because see, you got to know who you are. You know, the, uh, David said, thy word, O Lord, that word, your word, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. Can I ask anybody that's honest enough to say it? The last mistake you really made, the one you remember, can you honestly say you checked the word of God for direction or you prayed for direction before you did it? If you can, I, I want to I talk with you because maybe I can help you read the scripture better. I wanna... You know what it is? is that we can become enamored with the gift of intellect that is in our flesh, that we think the gift of the spirit doesn't matter. You know, um, I, I don't know about you, some of y'all have probably used uh, these new um, systems. Garmin came out and they really started the industry of the knowing directions and navigating pathways. Um, I used to ride motorcycles with Deacon Rainey and uh, Deacon Rainey, my man, uh, we would go out and we would be just riding James Haywood, Deacon. We all be, we'd just be rolling. And we used to call Deacon Rainey the navigator. I promise you, you cannot lose that man. Rainey, you could take him up I don't care, anywhere in Rhode Island, we'd be on the back roads with the bike. We'd just be roo, roo, roo. And, and nobody would know where they were at but Rainy. We just rolling. But I found, I found something. I found something. What Rainy would do, we thought he was a genius, but he shared with us. Before we went out, he would map out the pathway. Know where the roads led. 
Nowhere good stops would be for lunch. Because he wanted to know what was ahead. Now he was good. But now we've got these new things now. And you know what they do? They not only map out the road ahead, but they look ahead to satellite and traffic information. So that the mapped road that you were going on, if there's an accident, they'll say turn here. But I was supposed to turn that, no, turn here, because we're gonna go around this accident. Because we not only have a map to what's ahead, but we see in real time what has happened ahead. So we're navigating around the danger and the delay. And some of us are missing out on God's navigating around dangers and delays because we won't allow God to give us real time information as he shows us the way that we should take. And if we would allow God to guide us, we would have less issues and less tears and less trials. And even when we got in trouble, if we got in trouble with God, we would know that it was going to be all right. And we would never worry if it's going to work out because we would believe that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. We would know that God in trouble is better than being on my own in a paradise because as long as I got God on my side, everything is going to work out for my good. So I want God to guide me so that my light can shine and I will not be darkened through my own mistakes. Instead, I can enjoy the light. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on, let's praise him. Let's honor him. The doors of the church open as you all stand. Those who are not already standing, I want to welcome you today. If you're looking for a place of worship, if you're looking for a church home, I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to become a part of our family here at Shiloh. Online, call me. Email me. Just say, Bishop, I want I want in. I want to be a part of the body of Christ there at Shiloh in New London. I welcome you to the family. I welcome you to this place. I promise you, we won't preach at you, but we'll try to help you to make your life the best life it can be. I welcome you today. Will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. To worship you. To, to worship you. time I love you
to worship you to worship you oh my soul read your take joy my king joy my king in what you hear Him now, we exalt we exalt thee. God's presence in this place and whatever you need it's here right now whatever you need it's here right now
invite you now to get whatever gift God has laid on your heart. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Get it ready. Whatever God has laid on your heart, don't forget your capital gift. I just feel God's spirit, God's presence all over this place. Thank you, Lord. Hey, there are three ways to give. Givelify and Cash App. You can mail it in if you're online or you can give in person today. Woo, glory. Hey, God. Just hold your gift in your hand. If it's given by personal device, just hold it. I'm getting ready to pray over the offering. I really am. I just, I'm just feeling the move of the Spirit in your hearts. I feel God moving. I invite you to give on your way out of the door. Give it into the ushers on your way as you leave today. Let's bless this offering. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Continue to bless us that we might, God, give more and more because you've blessed us with super abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.